Hey family and welcome back to my channel Stuck With Jesus. I am Rebecca Stuckey. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel to watch another video. I'm so excited to be filming this. So today's video I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you guys. And so I know I invited you guys to take this journey with me but I don't want you guys to start on this journey with me without understanding exactly where I've been. So in this video the purpose is for me to kind of let you guys know about some key things that I went through that literally drove me to Christ. Um, so that's what today's video is going to be about. And so I'm about to get started. Um, before I start, I do want to let you guys know that I do have like a notepad here and I wrote down everything that I wanted to discuss in this video and I don't want to miss anything, but my memory is shot. So um, we're just going to ask God to bring everything back to my remembrance. And if you see me looking down at the notepad, it's because I want to make sure I'm staying on track. Um, so I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of background about me. So one thing that I did want to include is that I'm a PK. So if you know what that means, you know, PK stands for preacher's kid. So, um, my mom is a preacher. Um, she's actually the overseer at my church. I go to churches of Christ holiness, which is a small church here in Winston Salem. And we're located on 25th street. Um, we're under the leadership of Pastor James Britton, who is a really big influence in my life. Um, so that's where I attend and that's where I've been attending since I was little. And so I just kind of wanted to let you guys know about my background. So I definitely grew up in the church, but as far as having a relationship with God of my own, didn't have that. So I now that I'm thinking about it, um, I'm realizing that I never had a relationship. It was really like conditional. Like I would only talk to God when I needed something, if you get what I'm saying. So like if I wanted God to come through on my behalf, I'll pray and I'll talk to God and I'll seek him a little bit because I wanted him to give me what I wanted. And also, like if I had got myself in a really tough predicament that I knew I couldn't get myself out of, I would pray then. But otherwise, I really didn't like talk to God on a regular basis or seek his face or really like get into the word of God like I had been taught to do. I really just kind of relied on my mother's relationship with God to get me into the gates of heaven. Um, I know that sounds bad, but that's honestly what I did. Like growing up with a praying mom to got me through a lot of things. And so I kind of just depended on that in order to get me into heaven. But looking back at it, I really didn't have a relationship with God of my own. But um, I'm going to fast forward to 2018 because that's when my life went downhill. So um, in 2018, my life was basically starting to crumble. Like it was kind of in shambles. And so anybody that knows me, um, I do go to Winston-Salem State University. I'm currently a senior, class of 2020. And during 2018, I was in college. And um, when I first got to college my freshman year, I hit the ground running. I was super involved. And um, I was in several positions uh, throughout my matriculation through college and I was just really a person that was like known and like a face that you recognize that you knew you could go talk to and I would like love to offer help to people if I could. I would put on different events and stuff to encourage people and empower um, the young ladies, especially on my college campus. But um, in doing that, <clears throat> excuse me, in doing that and being so involved um, on my campus, I also saw membership into an organization as a lot of college students do and so in seeking membership I actually did obtain membership into an organization and when I joined that organization it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be like some things that came with it okay yeah I knew about that stuff but a lot of stuff I truly was not prepared for and so um, my experience was okay it wasn't really the most positive experience, if I'm being honest. And a lot of that came because of some of the decisions that I've made. And so that's one thing that I want to do in this video. I definitely want to take responsibility for the parts that I've played in these different situations I'm going to tell you guys about. And so in this situation, I definitely made some decisions that... Um, that weren't, I guess, necessarily fair or that weren't necessarily right. But I'm going to be honest, at that time, I thought I was doing what was best for me. And that was my main goal of being the best version of me that I could be. So I went hard. And so um, that caused a lot of other people pain and caused them to feel away. And so um, as a result of that, I experienced a lot of 
pain and like drama and just constantly having to fight different battles back to back to back to back and um it just wasn't the sisterhood that I joined for honestly like I really didn't receive that in full if you get what I'm saying I definitely had like a couple of young women that I was really close to when I was a part of the organization but otherwise it was just a lot of different battles that I felt like I had to fight while I was in the organization um and so even during that time in 2018 I was also in a very toxic relationship and so um I met this person in 2017 and we were just friends like we were just cool and we would just talk on the phone and get to know each other love talking to each other love hearing about each other's background and aspirations like we were really tight and I think because we were so tight we really started to take interest in each other like romantically and so um, we decided that we wanted to kind of call ourselves like talking and then eventually we wanted to start dating and so once we did start dating it was very like off and on um we were never like really consistent in our relationship and just things just never sat right with me but in that relationship I did experience a lot of pain um I dealt with several things in that relationship that were very heartbreaking um and when I call it a toxic relationship, I'm not just talking about this person's behavior because even though his behaviors were very toxic, so were mine. Even though I was exuding like loyalty and just honestly trying to love this person to the best of my ability at that time, I was also being toxic because I kind of enabled the behavior because whenever something um, was done, done to me wrongfully or whenever I was embarrassed by this person, I would just... I don't know I would just get over it or I would just like I would feel away but I'd be like you know we got to fight through this I would just constantly go back and take this person back and back and back and back and so to me that was very toxic honestly to enable that type of behavior and so um with that relationship I experienced a lot of hurt and we went through a lot of things honestly we reached a lot of points of no returns, but I thought, you know, if we could get through this, we can get through anything. If our love can get us through this, there's nothing we can't get through type of thing. And then um, I think the very last thing that was pretty much done to me that I found out about, I found out some information from this person that was very shocking and very, very hurtful. I didn't see coming. And I think that was kind of like the end for me. That was like the point of no return. We just can't come back from this at all. I'm not willing to go through anything else with you. And so um, that was really hard for me during that time, being somebody that was used to going back every time and really having to be strong in my decision and say, I'm not gonna go back. Um, and so I remember when that person gave me that information, I was really shocked. And then I remember I just started sobbing. And so I was crying and crying and crying. And I remember running to one of my friends and I would just let her know what was going on. And I was just crying and crying and crying. And she just held me. She was really there for me during that time. So I do want to thank her. If she ever sees this video, I do want to thank her for being there for me during that time. And I remember the next day she came over and we were um, together and we were watching Netflix and just kind of hanging out because she didn't want me to be alone or by myself. And so we were watching TV and we have the same phone, but we do know each other's passwords. We had each other's like thumbprints on each other's phone. So I picked up her phone and went to Instagram thinking it was mine. And so when I opened her phone and went to Instagram, I saw a text message come through from a name that I was very familiar with. And um, so I went to those text messages, although I probably shouldn't have looking back at it, but my gut was telling me like, see what this is about, like what is this? And so as I went to those text messages, I found out a lot of information that was very disturbing. Um, and after seeing that information, I felt very betrayed and I really felt like I could not trust this person. And it was really bad because I had just went through this breakup the day before and I ran to this person for comfort only to find out they had been betraying me the whole while and I didn't know it and so that was just a lot to take on and I remember after finding all of this out and going through all of this stuff within this year I was just really in a dark place like I really found myself to be really depressed and I just felt really hopeless and I didn't want to be here anymore and so I remember I was sitting in my room and I was contemplating and I was just like 
I can't take nothing else. Like, I can't take another thing. I don't think I would be able to get through it. Like, I can't do this. Like, I honestly just rather not be here. If I have to keep going through all of this hurt and all this pain, I don't want to be here anymore. And so I remember going into my bathroom and I had made up my mind to just take my own life. And I was just low. Like, that's the only word that I could really use to describe it. I was in such a low spot, like in such a deep, dark hole, in such a low place in my life where I felt like leaving this world was the only option that I had in order to escape pain. And so during that time when I was in the bathroom, my mom kept ringing up my phone. And so my phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. So I check it and I found out it's my mom. And so um, I answered the phone because I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I need to go ahead and get my mama out the way because if I keep ignoring her phone call, she's going to pull up on me and knock on the door like, why are you not answering the phone? And so um, I remember I answered the phone because I hadn't talked to her the day before and I hadn't talked to her that day. And anybody that knows me and my mom, they know that we are really, really close. And so I talk to her at least twice a day, once in the morning and then once before I go to bed. And so I hadn't talked to her. And so she was really worried. So when she answered the phone, she greeted me like she always did. And then she was like, you know, you okay? I hadn't talked to you. And y'all, I lost it. I was crying. I was sobbing. I was just boohooing, just going on and on and on and on. I couldn't get a word out. I was just crying and crying and crying and crying. Like at that point, it was like a release. I let everything out. And I'm crying and my mom just like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Do you need me to come over there? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Hey, hey. And like, she's like, calm down, calm down. What's wrong? Talk to me. Talk to me. What's wrong? And y'all, I can't say nothing. Like I'm really just crying and crying and crying. Like just, and um, I just couldn't say anything, and I couldn't tell her what I was doing, what I was about to do to myself. I couldn't. I was just crying, and I remember my mama just instantly started praying. She just started warring in the spirit, casting out the enemy, and just really going in, like going hard in prayer for her child. And I remember um. I, in, I ended up not crying. I stopped crying eventually. And she's just praying and praying and praying. And she's like, do you need me to come over? And I'm like, no, Ma, I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. And so she's like, you sure you don't want me to come over? Like, I can hear the worry in her voice. And she's like, you sure you don't want me to come over? Like, I'll come over. And I'm like, no, I just want to sleep. And so that happened. And I remember that was a Saturday. And I remember the next day was Sunday. So I remember when I woke up that morning, um... I confronted that friend about what I had saw and I remember I went to church and my pastor was preaching the word as he always does nothing but the word go, goes forth in my church and so he's preaching and preaching and I'm sobbing y'all again crying and I know I went to church for at least two or three months after that and was just crying every time I went to church I felt like I was breaking more and more and more and more and more and like God was just tearing down this wall like more and more and more like this wall of resistance towards him and so I knew what God was trying to do I knew that he was calling me um to him and I knew that he wanted me to give my life to him but I was not ready y'all if I'm gonna be honest I was not ready like I I felt like I had it all together and then my world just fell apart and it was just like God I've turned my back on you so many times how can you want me like why are you still fighting for me and that's what it felt like a fight it felt like God was on this hand and the devil was on this hand and the devil has a hold on me. But God's like, no, come this way. I'm trying to bring you out. Come this way. And I know that he wanted my life, but I wasn't ready. So I resisted for months. And um, that, that brought us into 2019. And I remember just being really hopeless still and really hurt. And I entered a point of hatred and resentment for those people um and one thing that I experienced that really threw me off was like social anxiety and anybody that knows me know that I'm a people person like I speak to everybody like that's just me I'm around you're gonna see my face I'm a support like that's just I'm on the scene or whatever but I couldn't do it during that time like during 2019 I was just really like it was almost like a disgust and like a fear to be around people. 
I felt like I couldn't show myself, like I couldn't face people in the state that I was in because that's not what they're used to seeing from me. And so I just felt like so low and like a disappointment and I just couldn't be around people. I couldn't face people. So I remember I would just wake up and go to school and go to work and come home. Like I just wake up, go to school, go to work and come home. That was my daily routine. And the only people that saw me were like the people that were in my classes, in my social work department. And I've actually made some great friends in that department. And then the young ladies in that organization that I was still close to, um, they knew about everything that I had been through. And so I was able to talk to a few of them and hang out with some of those, some of them still or talk to them on the phone from time to time, but not really a lot. But um, I was just really going through it. And so I couldn't really be around people. I didn't feel like myself. And one of the things that hurt me the most was that when I came into college, I had so many plans. And I know that people had so many expectations for me, especially senior year. I think everybody, you know, pretty much knew what my goal was. And I know a lot of people were rooting for me. And I had people like, you know, are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? Are you going to run? Are you going to yada yada? And I'm telling people, no, like, I, I just don't want to. Like, I can't. And I had people saying, like, you know, like, if it's money, I'll pay for your campaign. Like, it was just like stuff like that like people were really backing me and supporting me but it was like a place where the place where I was at I couldn't go through with it and so it's like I knew I couldn't serve others in the state that I was in because I wasn't okay mentally I was not there y'all like I was gone mentally I was just not here I was not myself and I didn't want to be in a position of power or a position of example knowing that I wasn't truly an example and knowing that when I'm by myself a lot of times I really still don't want to be here. And so I couldn't, I just couldn't go through with that. And so that really hurt me. That was something that I really had to deal with because it was something that I had planned for myself for a very long time. And so that brings me into talking about, I feel like the plans that I had for myself, God like literally ripped away everything. And so the things that I had in my life that I placed my identity and worth in, God ripped them away from me and was like, Okay, I gave you these things because that's what you wanted. But now I'm going to show you that, that those things were not what you needed. You needed me. You still need me. Come to me. And so I really felt like he ripped everything away from me um, until he was my only option. And so in September, I remember seeing a video of a young lady who had um, withdrew or um, her membership from her organization. And she was talking about it. And in her video, she was just giving the word of God. Like she wasn't slandering the organization or talking bad about anybody, but she was just giving the word of God and just sharing what God had placed on her heart. And I think I was able to receive it because although I was still a member of the organization, I was raised in a church. And so I know when the word of God is presented to you and you see it to be true, to see it and to know that it's true, to know what the word of God says and to choose not to do it, to turn from it and willfully sin, that's dangerous and that leads to destruction and so I knew that once I heard those words and once I did that research for myself and found things out for myself I knew that I couldn't stay in it and so I know a lot of people don't agree with the way that I handled things don't agree with me withdrawing membership from the organization but honestly I did what was best for me I did what God wanted for me and I don't regret it one bit but um I know a lot of people don't understand that but just I think a lot of people see, oh, you left this organization, but they don't understand that I was going through a life thing. This wasn't just about these letters. It was about my life. God was trying to win my soul. And so that was just one of many things that I had to let go of. And so I don't want people to think that I have any type of ill will or feelings towards people that are still in that way of life. Um, I still love those people. And I hope one day that they can, you know, come to Christ or if they know Christ, that they can get even more serious in their walk with him. And I just wish everybody the best that's still in that lifestyle. But that was just something that I had to let go. And so I let go of that relationship. And in 2019, I still dealt with um, feelings of wanting to go back, but I had to fight those things because I knew that the information that I had been given, it was just at a point of no return. So I had to let that go. I withdrew membership from that organization in October. 
and I had to let that friendship go. And so I tried to reconcile with that person um, after confronting them. And just that year, I didn't feel like I received an apology from that person. And I will definitely give that person their credit. They definitely did apologize to me for the things that they did. But as far as their actions, they weren't apologetic. I felt like they treated me in such a way that was not... um, apologetic that was not friendly and I felt like they were just showing me more and more and more that we weren't meant to be friends anymore and so I ended that friendship and so I remember in October it was right before a homecoming and I'm like this is my senior homecoming I'm about to pop out like I done been through some stuff but I'm finna get my face back so I done ordered this hair I done ordered these dresses like I'm ready to pop out and God's like nope you're not gonna be able to go And so I just really felt like him pulling me and telling me, like, you don't need to do that. You need to seek me during this time. And so I had several people come to me and say, hey, like, you've been through a lot. Like, have you fasted? Have you fasted? Um, One of my big sisters in Christ, um, she told me that I needed to fast. My mom told me I needed to fast. And then my pastor said I needed to fast. And none of them had talked to each other about me. So I'm like, okay, I need to fast. God, I hear you. And so I really felt it in my spirit that I needed to fast. And so I didn't go out um, like to any events during homecoming. But um, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was just at the house and I fasted. And so when I say fast, I mean fast, fast, like no food, no drink, no TV, no social media, like nothing but the word of God. Like I was in this Bible right here and I was just really seeking God, just like opening up the word and just allowing him to just reveal different things to me. And I, I really believe that's where my relationship with God started. And so during that time, I did give my life to him. I just confessed with my mouth and I believed in my heart that God sent his son to die and to rise up for me to be saved. And when he rose from the dead, my sins were forgiven. And so I just asked God to be his child again, to forgive me for each time that I had turned my back on him and to truly just just have mercy on me one more time and just to really change me and just to renew my mind to take away any resentment or hatred that I had for anybody in my past life like it's just it's been a journey y'all and I truly felt God's forgiveness and I felt his acceptance to be his child once I accepted his son I just felt a peace it's so weird I just really felt a peace and I'm not gonna say that I've been perfect in my walk ever since that day but I've been walking I've been walking it out since that day. And so um, the, the more time that goes by, the more that I can see that I am truly a new creature in Christ. Those old things are passed away and all things have become new in my life. And so I'm still asking God to constantly renew my mind from the things that I experienced in my past life. But I truly feel different. Like I don't feel hopeless. I don't feel depressed. I don't feel any of that. I feel peace and love. Like I feel so loved. I just, I don't know. It's just really different. Being in Christ is truly different. And I know that from where I was then to where I am now, Jesus truly made the difference in my life, which is why I'm going so hard for him. And which, uh, which is why I was prompted to create a channel to truly share some of the things that I've been through, because I know a lot of people that knew me thought I had it all together. And then they thought I just fell off the face of the earth. And now I'm coming back all of a sudden, but it wasn't like that. I went through a lot of things behind the scenes, behind closed doors that people didn't know about. And so I just give God the glory that I'm able to talk about these things now and not even cry. I remember a time when I couldn't even talk about these things without crying and just boohooing. But I just thank God for freedom and for forgiveness and for his grace. And I just truly hope that this video inspires somebody. Um, I hope that God is just glorified through this video. And I hope that you guys see um, by me doing this work here on this platform that you will see how good God is and that you guys will be prompted to come into the knowledge of him because he truly changed my life. Like... I was in such a deep, dark hole that I could not pull myself out of where God was literally my only option. And when I chose him, everything changed. It wasn't overnight, but I instantly felt like something was different in me. 
So I just, I want that for everyone. And I know that everybody's been through some things. So I hope that somebody was able to relate to the things that I've been through. And hopefully you seek God the way that I did. And don't try to ease that pain or numb that pain with anything else. God is, God is the answer. Trust me, God is the answer. And accepting his son, that's the answer to the peace that you're looking for. So if you're listening to this video and you're looking for peace, that's the answer. Jesus is the answer. So thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's kind of long, but that's my testimony. So I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you share it. You guys comment down below any thoughts that you have after this video. And I look forward to filming the next one. Bye, y'all.